Tracheal collapse is a common disease process that we encounter both in emergency medicine and I think in small animal general practice. And it's a disease that's both challenging for the patient, challenging for the veterinarian, and certainly challenging for their clients as well. Traditional treatment of tracheal collapse has focused on cough suppression, and we feel that Hycodan is probably the best cough suppressant for use in, uh, in dogs with this problem. In addition to that, prednisone for its anti-inflammatory effects because there's significant inflammation that's happening within the trachea and the main stem bronchi in dogs with this problem. And finally, antibiotics, at least a transient course of antibiotics that can cover organisms such as mycoplasma, uh, which may be uh, contributing to uh, acute exacerbation in some of these pets. We, haven't, we don't know that that's definitively a problem, but something that, that many clinicians will elect to treat prophylactically for. And many of these dogs with medical management can uh, thrive and do very well for a, for a prolonged period of time, years often. Um, at other times, or eventually, many of the dogs with tracheal collapse are going to fail eventually. They'll fail medical management. And when these guys fail medical management, that's when we really need to think about evaluating them for either a surgical uh, uh, treatment or uh, an interventional treatment. And uh, in the past, when animals failed medical management, the, the idea was that in animals with cervical tracheal collapse, that they could be managed surgically uh, through the placement of prosthetic rings uh, around the tracheal uh, cartilages of the cervical trachea. Unfortunately, those prosthetic rings uh, can't be placed easily um, for animals with tra uh, intrathoracic tracheal collapse. So that was a, a potential limitation. In addition, uh, tracheal ring prosthesis um, was also associated with a significant, very significant incidence of surgical uh, morbidity and some surgical mortality or perioperative mortality as well. And uh, I think the surgical outcomes in these patients are largely dependent on uh, the, on the operator. Uh, those that do a lot of these procedures, that are very comfortable with this procedure, tend to have better outcomes than those that may only do one or two uh, of the procedures a year. So um, it, the surgical procedure is definitely operator dependent. And it has, uh, when animals make it through the procedure um, and make it out of the hospital, they can go for very long periods of time with a good degree of success. So it's great for younger animals that have cervical collapse of their trachea. Um, however, a big population of animals with tracheal collapse have uh, disease um, at the thoracic inlet and down towards the, uh, towards the carina as well, and possibly involving the main stem bronchi. And so when those animals have failed medical management, in the past they tended to be euthanized. Um, however, in the past five years or so, there's been a lot of interest in investigation of placement of an intraluminal self-expanding metallic tracheal stent uh, that will hold open the trachea from the inside rather than, uh, rather than having the trachea held open from the outside in the cervical region. So tracheal stent placement offers an, a treatment option for those animals that have intrathoracic tracheal collapse or diffuse tracheal collapse uh, where surgical intervention is, is inappropriate um, or associated with such high morbidity that, uh, that uh, the owners like to, to forgo that route.